the thing that I, <coughs> I did uh, while I was still working at, uh, at CSC Finland. So, um, let's see. Fine. Um, so back in 2014, uh, we had a project with ECNW that's actually part of the scalability program already, where, where they wanted to check how, how difficult it would be to port, uh, I would say, one of the most time-consuming routine in the IFS physics to, to use accelerators. And that, that time that was uh, Intel KNC and, and uh, GPU, uh, NVIDIA GPUs. But in this particular talks, uh, I'm going to emphasize this GPU migration uh, and use of OpenACC directives. And we are comparing against uh, Hashwell and their OpenMP version, and, and we have a, this KN, K, K40C uh, GPU system. Uh, so Cloud SC is, uh, is a code where we have like three and a half thousand lines of code. Uh, it's really thread safe, so uh, we have to put open ACC directives there. And it's about 10% of IFS forecast time, so it's quite, quite demanding itself. So any optimization there is, 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 uh, is welcoming. So this, uh, when we expanded these OpenACC directives, so uh, we ended up having uh, quite a lot of more lines there. So uh, last year, some, some of the baseline results, I would say. So w when I had a first, first go on it, uh, more or less manually, and then later on using this ACC insert Perl script, which automatically inserts open ACC directives there. And with some additional edits, so I could get this uh, timing down from 40 seconds to 0.25 seconds on, on the particular configuration we had there. We had at the time uh, PGI 14.7 and CUDA 5.5 or 6. Uh, also, uh, Cray compiler was used at, uh, at, uh, at the Swan system in the US. I need a slightly different set of open ACC directives there to get things going. I'm not going to dwell on, on Cray results at the moment because I have not rerun uh, this case again on, on Cray after, after last year. So interesting thing was that uh, after I put all these open SEC or the, or the scripts put the open SEC directives there, I could still get uh, that same code running on the on the Hashwell system without any loss of accuracy. I just ignored the open SEC directives, so so, so we we could really share the single source code. At the time, a year ago, we had a slightly different Hashwell. It was actually NDA Hashwell at the time, so I was not supposed to say anything about that year ago. But anyway, it was 36 core system, 2.3 gigahertz. And when you, when you compared GPUs against that, so there was a lot of data transfer overhead, obviously. And also, there was something strange going on with data present testing and memory pinning. I think uh, many of these have been uh, have been a little bit uh, sort of sorted out in in the latest PGI version. So problem setup is such that unlike last year, so now I'm having uh, in this this case 160,000 grid point columns. Uh, so if you look at that global map there, so we have like uh, like. Uh, this extrude there, where we have 137 levels. And about 80,000 columns fit into one K40 GPU. So uh, even if we had only one GPU, so we, could, we have to do two passes to, to, to run, run through uh, 160,000 grid points. 
And if you remember, uh, K40 has about, let's say, 11 gigabyte plus uh, usable memory for, for the users. Uh, all these grid point columns you see here, they are completely independent of each other, so there is no horizontal dependencies. But there is a, a level dependency which prevents uh, parallelization along this vertical dimension, which is a big, big of a pain from <laughs> GPU's point of view. So I, I don't get the occupancy on, on GPUs very good at all. So anyway, in, in IFS, um, this is not even the uh, GPU version, so uh, these, uh, these blocks are organized in, 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 not in a natural way where you have just ngp dot times n lev, but we actually use this kind of uh, n proma blocking factor times number of levels and then number of blocks. So instead of two dimensional natural array, we, we, we use three dimensional. But now uh, OpenMP, which has, has been present and is still present in IFS, physics, so uh, parallelization is done over these n blocks because they are like thread safe. Each, each block uh, size of n proma, n left is, is totally independent. Even individual uh, element in, inside n proma is, is independent. And that's not compile time, that's a run time. That's something we, we bring in as a name list parameter. So we use roughly these kind of options. Uh, I think I, I kept uh, some special environment variable that may not, not be needed. I mean, bu buffer size, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's default is 16 megab megabyte. I found it well, last year that four megabytes was more optimal. And I don't remember what was the reason for this no shared. Uh, I think it's uh, not needed anymore. Something Peter Mesmer told me at the time. So now we are on 15.7, and, and these are roughly the compiler options. By the way, I couldn't get it running with uh, uh, mvect equal to fma. There was a crash, but maybe there is something wrong with the code. But yes, yeah, so on Hashville, I tried to use cmd256 and so on. OK. Uh, N promas, the blocking factors are conflicting. So if you run on, on the host machine, Hashville, it has to be order of 10 to 100 only. And in N proma, you have to push it as high as possible, like in this case, 80,000, because that's the maximum I can afford. Uh, so this is how we drive it in OpenMP. So basically, we have a, like 65 arrays of that kind of n proma times n left times n number of blocks and we have a so-called n proma loop and then we call cloud sc we, we actually pass like 60, 65 arrays there just show one here okay uh, block by block uh, we, we cover all the grid points on that mpi task although we don't really use mpi as such in this this study we have like a 160,000 points on on one single mpi Task. And then we put this kind of parallel private, parallel uh, due schedule statements there. And, and uh, yeah, that's, we, are, we are basically done for OpenMP version. That's something which I didn't have to do really anything because it, it already existed in, in IFS. And this is the scaling, slightly two different uh, end promo values. So order of 10, we get slightly better performance when we have 24 threads. So this Hashville has 24 cores. I didn't try hyper-threading on at all, so I didn't go to larger than 20, 28 threads. And I, I bound all the threads to, to cores. So that's, that's, that's taken into account already. Fine. That, that's uh, gigaflops per second. Fine. So we scale. Now, how do we develop this GPU version? So basically, we can benefit from this OpenMP loop. There's no, no problem. We just have to somehow add these ACC data statements. And why we keep this OpenMP loop is because uh, we have potentially more than one GPU, so we can, we can actually assign different threads using different GPUs. So. So we just have to make sure that ACC data are added there. 
uh, and inside the OpenMP loop, and also the device has been selected. And so I really like this that we can we can live together with OpenMP and OpenACC. So OpenMP like outer loop and OpenACC in, inside there. And CloudSC was pre-processed with ACC insert at the time, and uh, and then. In order to get performance, we need really large end probe. So this is the OpenMP loop, so it's like, like a similar as before for Hashwell, except we have to put like do schedule here, which I think implies static comma one. And then we have to grab the thread ID and uh, GPU ID. And then we do a modulo calculation. And then we put here number of threads, uh, same as number of GPUs. And then we call ACC set device before we start doing this, this loop. And in fact, after we set device, we, we, we should have these ACC data statements. Well, they, they come in, in here. And here we call uh, call then Cloud SC. And yes, typical values really for NProma for any good performance, make it larger than 10,000. Fine. Works perfectly well. Uh, here is one, uh, let's say 1% one of of Cloud SC, there are a lot of these kind of loops. In fact, we have some of the arrays are actually four-dimensional, but I, 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 there is some uh, microparameters or whatever they are, like N, NCLV LV is five constant. So, but just to show you that this uh, ACC insert actually inserted this thing, I mean, all these, all these directives, I, I really didn't have to modify much of it. it. It even put the private statements in a correct place and reduction statements there. I added manually async here. So every single kernel or ACC parallel, I always use async. And then at the bottom of the routine, I call ACC wait. And this is the blocks block number. Because then I removed all the potential synchronizes, whatever happens between two consecutive ACC kernel blocks. And I don't know how many percent I, I gained at the time, I think 20, 30 percent, uh, at least in the initial version. Fine. Yes, yeah, so we async removes CUDA thread synchronizes. Sorry, why? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be any problem. So again, uh, results uh, gigaflops per second. The blue one or, or the gray one is one GPU and uh, the yellow one is two GPUs. And if you remember, Hashwell had 24 cores was order of 16, 17, well, 16, 16 plus gigaflops. So we are a little bit behind even with two GPUs. But NProma is really, really quite massive. Uh, we don't get almost any performance when, when the NProma is 100. And the same holds 4,000. So we really have to start off at, at somewhere 10,000 or so. Now timing breakdown on, on single GPU. I've got Hashwell, which is the total time. There's no communication, uh, just the time, the milliseconds. And then when I have 
n from 1,000. So this uh, is supposed to be yellowish. Uh, that's the computational time. Then the reddish one is communication time. And then some other overhead, which is open ACC, some memory pinning, and whatever data present testing, something what, what I cannot simply find out what, what, it, what is it exactly. Communication, you mean host GPU? Yeah, host and, and back, yes. And, and that, you see, I, I, I keep it constant. But let's say all this above this yellow is, is overhead. I mean, there is maybe some cert, certain sort of uh, uh, overlapping going on with, with some computation with the data communication and computation. Uh, but I don't, I don't disting, ding, distinguish it here. So that's in a, in a millisecond world. So we are really quite far behind. But then if you look at just the positive side, ignore all this overhead. And we are beating, like ha Peter Mesmer said, hands down, hash will whole note. So, so if you just think about 80,000 n-proma, and then from a 10 on Hashville, so the so computation is actually faster, somewhat faster. And that's not, Hashville is not one, one core, it's really the 24 core system, 2.5 gigahertz. So I tried to take advantage of one thing which uh, didn't work a year ago, at least I crashed. And that's something I heard this morning that is supposed to not work now even because there's some race conditions. So I'm saturating GPUs with more work. So the same loop, but now I have more threads here, like four times number of GPUs here. So I assign several threads simultaneously on the same GPU. So they are like time sharing it. <clears throat> and, and it worked. And we got, got slightly better results. I don't know if it's, if it's right to say that it's concurrently executed kernels, but let's call it time sharing anyway. So, so when we had four simultaneous OpenMP host threads, host threads running on the same GPU so we could saturate it. But then we have to be very careful. We cannot run with NPROM 80,000 anymore because we run out of memory. So we have to divide this NPROM with, with fours by, by four and we get 20,000. And then uh, four simultaneous 20,000 blocks running, running there per GPU. So now gigaflops are totally different scale. Uh, this is the multiple copies. So if you have one copy, that's the normal case, two copies and four copies, we are exceeding 14 gigaflops now on two GPUs. And this is what happens when you look at these two different runs, the, the one where, the top one where you have only one OpenMP thread per GPU and four. So you have a, some kind of time sharing going on and you've got these four copies of driver API simul simultaneously there. There's also some overlapping in communication uh, going out and coming in. Uh, and if we now postulate that Communication still takes the same amount even if we have four threads. Well, anyway, everything that is above this uh, yellow line, ye yellow bar, that's the, that's the overhead. So overhead has come down quite radically. So this is the time shared version. This is the Hashville version, and that was the original where we could use 80,000 and Proma. I like this result because I, I, I still have not enough parallelism, but I still got some better results. 
I mean, now we have to work on this level dependency thing. So we can probably get rid of it somehow by using uh, levels from the previous time step. Of, don't know. So gigaflops uh, in the same chart we have now. Hashwell, two GPUs with time sharing mode, two GPUs without time sharing, one GPU time share shared, and one GPU normal mode. And when I talk about time share, this is really the four copies per uh, for, th for open API threads working on, on one, one GPU at the time. Okay, that's, that's the final thing. So, so I sort of port it again, this Cloud SC, uh, and now using <coughs> almost the latest PGI versions and also CUDA 7. Don't know why, but I got this oversubscribing, time sharing, overpopulating GPUs working now. Is it, is it CUDA 7 or should I have CUDA 6.5 or something? But I can saturate GPUs now. And thanks to OpenMP, thanks to multi-core there, the host having this structure already, so we, we can take, make a, make a benefit of, make use of it and benefit from that. And outcome is not, not too bad, I would say. In fact, I was supposed to present exactly the same presentation than I had last year at the HPC workshop, but then I got these saturation results and I, I rewrote the whole presentation. Yeah, that's, that's all. Do you have any questions? In an ideal world, we would want the, um, all the grid columns to be located on the GPU. Um, so you mean create them, uh, keep yeah, them there? We don't want anything to be communicated between the host and the GPU. I thought that was the, uh, the ideal situation. Yes, if we had enough GPUs, so that we could we could like statically allocate their one off per GPU. Yeah, we could do it. But then even then we have to when we do time stepping, we have to update some of them. Not all, all probably, but some of them because the it, the, 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 the weather evolves. So. Yeah, so all the data is on the GPU. This is what uh, Vector Swiss has done. Probably all the data is there. Yes. It doesn't come off the GPU until we need to uh, yeah, yeah. do some post processing. Yes. Um, in. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. And maybe some of the uh, unknown parameters disappear as well. Yeah, the red red will disappear. Yeah. And the other overhead should reduce as well. Yeah, but you still have to update there something. I mean, there th there is at least some MPI communication. Maybe, maybe far away from physics comes into the game. Yeah, yeah, true. But uh, I mean, we can't get everything immediately. So. <laughs> we have to be happy with. In a development sense, this is good because yeah. you can still um, get reasonably good performance mm -hmm. with taking advantage of the host memory uh, size relative to the rather smaller GPU size. You also think of the, uh, the, the final objective is to get uh, everything on the GPU. I had version, a hybrid version last year where I let this number of threads to be number of cores so that I, I pick the first, the first two, I mean, looking at the binding, the ones which are the correct socket those to run on GPUs and the rest of the cores I let to run on host. So it was really hybrid. But the problem is that Enproma has to be, is fixed for the whole run. So I cannot run with 80,000 Enproma on Xeon. No way. 
memory, everything, it's, it's not enough, and it's, it's much slower than if I had NProma 10. If I put NProma 10 on GPUs, I would have to wait, wait like a year to have some results.